In this project I'm going to demonstrate how to add colour, texture and contrast to a traditional black and white lino printed design. The workbook for this project is available in the description below. As well as traditional lino techniques such as cutting, inking and printing, I'll also have a go at combining the lino printing process with a watercolour transfer process. For this project I'm using soft cut lino, which as the name suggests is a little softer than traditional grey lino and easier to cut. Although while soft cut lino is easier to carve, I think it has a slightly less refined edge quality when it prints than old fashioned lino. So that's something to consider when choosing your lino. But either type will work for the processes to follow. For the watercolour transfer, you'll also need some clear plastic sheeting. This is acetate or transparency sheeting, but I've also had success with thin perspex and clear spiral binding covers. The plastic sheeting needs to be exactly the same size as the lino plate. You'll also need a still life to work from to create your initial design. I've included a range of still life images in the workbook below. These are suitable for a range of abilities because they include a grid over the image and a blank master page with corresponding grid marks that matches the images. But of course you can definitely create your own still life to work from. My advice would be to keep it simple as you'll need to cut the image out of lino and a simpler design will be easier to cut and work better with the colouring processes. I began this project by doing some warm up tonal drawings of the still life images. I then simplified the images into simple line drawings and then I took an inverse copy of the original to create a negative. I did this on the copier or you can use a photo editing app to create a negative of your image. Now I have a positive and negative image and I'm going to cut and collage them together to create a new design. Now I need to transfer the image to the lino. There's a few ways you can do this. You can use transfer paper or rub a soft pencil onto the back of your drawing and trace it through. But what I'm going to do is use eucalyptus oil in a spray bottle, a laser copy of my design and a printing press. The eucalyptus oil needs to be the 100% pure variety. Spray the laser copy with the oil. You can also find eucalyptus oil in an aerosol can, which is even easier, especially if your spray bottle is malfunctioning like this one is. Then line the lino up on top of the image and wind it through the press. The press needs to be very tight for this to work, so it should be quite hard to turn the wheel. This transfer method will ensure that your image is printed in reverse on the plate, so when you cut it out and print it, it'll print the right way, which is particularly handy if you have any text in your image. If it helps, you can make the print clearer with a permanent marker. If you don't have any eucalyptus oil, another way to transfer an image onto lino is to draw your image with a soft pencil. I used a 6B pencil to draw this image. Lay the pencil drawing on the plate bed and give it a spray with plain water. Then put the lino on top. Then roll it through a very tight press. Again, the press needs to be very tight for this to work. It should be a bit of an effort to wind it through. And now it's time to cut the lino. Here I'm adding a border around the edge of the plate. I'll leave this border uncut. As well as providing a neat outline, it helps to stop the roller from sinking into the cutout areas. As this will be a single color lino print, I'm basically going to cut out everything except the printed area. So in this case, all the blue bits. Whatever I cut, or anything I remove from the plate, will be white. Lino tools come in a few different tip shapes and sizes. I like to use a small V groover to cut lines around the shapes before I go in with a larger tool. I find this gives you a neater edge to work to. A common occurrence with lino cutting is slipping. Because you need to apply quite a lot of pressure to the tool, it can sometimes slip forward, resulting in you cutting into areas that you don't intend to. Or worse, if your hand is in front of the tool, it can result in cutting and stabbing your hand. So it's very important that you always make sure that your other hand, your non-cutting hand, is behind the front of the tool at all times. And to achieve more accuracy and less slippage, 
Keep turning the plate around so it's at a more comfortable angle to cut from. It's much easier to turn the plate than it is to turn your tool mid-cut. When cutting out a large section, I like to cut part way into the area from one side and then turn the plate around and cut in from the other side. This way, if the tool slips, it should only cut into an area that needs to be removed anyway. Another way to achieve a neat edge is to use a sharp blade to cut a line into the lino and then either follow the cut line with the carving tool or cut to the scored line and the pieces will pop out in a neat line. In these large sections, keep in mind that some of the cut lines may pick up a bit of ink and show up in the print. This is okay and oftentimes adds interesting lines and movement to the final print. But for this reason, assume that you might see some of the cuts and think about the direction of the cuts. If some of the cut lines do show up in the print, you want it to look like there's some intention and artistic consideration behind the way the lines are placed. If the cuts are going in all directions, it can look a bit messy and distract from the composition of your design. Now that I've removed all of the blue areas, I can do a test print. For this you need block printing ink. This is water-based black block printing ink. Roll the ink onto a flat inking plate. This is a piece of perspex. When inking, you need to lift the roller intermittently so that the ink covers the roller evenly. Look at the plate. If the ink looks even and smooth on the inking plate, it should be even on the roller. Then roll over the plate. You want to make sure that all of the raised areas, in this case the blue bits, are covered in ink. You can see how that border around the edge helps to stop the roller from falling too far into the cutout background area and pick up too many of the cut lines. To print the lino, place it on the etching press bed with the ink side up. Line up a clean sheet of paper on top and roll it through. You may need to do a few tests to work out the right pressure setting for your press. Not enough pressure and the black will be faded and patchy. Too much pressure and the ink will bleed and you'll lose the crisp cut edges. There's different ways you can add colour to your print. To hand colour a print, it's easier to use transparent materials such as inks and watercolour, mainly because you want to preserve that unique edge quality that is particular to lino cut printing. You don't want to cover any of the black. Alternatively, you can create a transfer using water soluble materials. As mentioned at the start, for this technique to work, it's important that the lino plate and the clear plastic plate are exactly the same size. Tape the clear sheet to the cut plate. Using the lino plate as a guide, you can paint in areas of colour according to the design on the lino. Here I'm using a combination of gouache and watercolour paints. It's imperative that the paint is water soluble when dry, which means that it reactivates when it gets wet. Acrylic paint won't work for this process because it's permanent when dry. So that it contrasts with the hard cut lines of the lino print, I'm deliberately trying to lay the colour down in a loose painterly style, but still trying to keep to the basic shapes and forms of the design on the plate. Then leave it to dry completely. For this process, it's also imperative to use a registration plate. This will ensure that both the lino print and the colour transfer will line up exactly. The inside line of the registration plate needs to be the same size as the plates, and the outer dimensions of the registration plate must be the same size as the paper you're going to print on. First I'm going to print the watercolour transfer. To do this you need to wet the paper you're going to print on first. I tried a variety of papers and of varying qualities and purposes but what worked best for me in the end was regular drawing cartridge. Because this paper is quite thin, it only needed about 30 seconds to soak. Lift the paper out of the water and allow the excess water to drip off. 
Then pat it dry with some paper towel or butcher's paper. It still needs to be damp, but not soaking wet. So not glistening with water droplets, if that makes sense. Make sure your registration plate is on the bed of the press and lay the painted plate, paint side up, on the registration plate. Then take your damp paper and line it up with the edges of the registration plate. The press needs to be very tight, so it should take some effort to wind it through. The damp paper reactivates the paint and the tight pressure in the press transfers it onto the paper. Now that one needs to dry. Next to combine the watercolour transfer with the lino printer design. So I simply re-ink the lino plate the normal way and place it within the same registration plate ink side up on the etching bed, making sure that it's exactly within that rectangle. Here's the watercolour transfer, which is now dry. I'm laying this face down onto the lino plate and lining it up with the borders of the registration plate. This time, because I'm transferring the lino ink, I don't need as much pressure on the press. So don't forget to readjust for a lino print level of pressure. And as long as you've used the registration plate, the colour transfer and the lino print should line up. And these are some more designs that I worked on. So I'm going to be honest, you've made it to the end of this video so you deserve the full story. This process took me a long time and multiple failures to figure out. If you want to have a go, my advice is to be prepared to spend some time experimenting with what you have. Especially if you're planning to do this with a full class. I found that different paint brands vary and react differently, and not necessarily according to quality. Same with paper. I tried a range of different qualities and varieties and ended up using plain old drawing cartridge. I have plans for another project using the watercolour transfer method. Something quite different. So watch this space and subscribe to see what I come up with next. And thanks for watching.